Well, after a very cold day in the northeast and northern mid-Atlantic states, where temperatures struggle just to get back above 40 in some places, uh, we are now getting ready for a developing storm in the Gulf of Mexico that's going to cross the Gulf, make a sharp left turn, and come right up the east coast and get ready for some heavy rains that will fall on Saturday. We're going to talk about that. Uh, flood watches, uh, we've got winter storm watches and the morning's up for places well to the north, as well as up in parts of the uh, Rockies and Plains. And we'll get into it all in great detail, as we always do right here on the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast, which is brought to you by Tempest by Weatherflow. Get the revolutionary Tempest weather system, and you too can join the fastest growing observing weather network on the planet. The link is on the descriptor to this podcast. And uh, if you uh, use the uh, coupon code WINTER2324 for anything you purchase, be it the weather station or just about anything else that's on the Tempest website, uh, use that coupon code because if you do, you will get uh, 10% off. 10% off is a good thing. All right, good evening, everybody. It's Joe Chaffee here. For those of you who are new to the show, welcome to tonight's Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast. Uh, Joe Rayo will be here shortly. He's a little bit delayed, but he will be joining us in short order. I uh, hope everybody had a uh, very good day today. And uh, well, now we've got uh, from the cold that we're dealing with, now we've got to deal with a uh, storm system. Uh, that's going to be uh, moving through the Gulf states, up the East Coast, a ton of moisture is involved, and uh, we could get another one of these rainfalls that go to at least two to three inches, or maybe even uh, a, a bit more. We'll see how it all plays out, but uh, models are certainly kind of lined up for all of this. Welcome to everybody tonight for the uh, tonight the Thursday night version of the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast. We're glad you're here. Welcome to everybody on the chat board, and for those of you or are watching in the background. It's great to have you here. As I said earlier, Joe Rayo will be here shortly. Um, if you're new to uh, my YouTube channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn your notifications on so you don't miss us. Normally, our schedule is Sunday through Thursday at 7.35 p.m. Uh, and uh, sometimes we change the schedules around because of uh, various obligations. Joe's been doing a lot of talks regarding the solar eclipse, which is coming up on April the 8th, I believe. Uh, so um, uh, when, we, when that happens, we uh, adjust the schedule accordingly. So that tonight's one of those nights, eight o'clock start time. I'm thinking Sunday should be a normal start time of uh, 7.35. If you like the show, hit the like button. Uh, because we love it when we get to 100 likes. I got to 100 likes last night, and I was all by myself because Joe had the night off. All right, so uh, we might as well just go ahead and get started because uh, he should be here in just a little bit, and we're going to switch this over, and oh, oh, that's not the right one. Uh, I got to move myself out of the way here, so just give me a moment. Let me get this out of the way. See, I am the director, the producer, everything. And you know what? I'm going to take my little box out of the way, too. <laughs> All right. So um, the first watches and warnings are, uh, watches are up, and uh, we've got uh, flood watches uh, for uh, Delaware and also areas around Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, northeastward, uh, southeastern Pennsylvania, all of New Jersey except for the northwest corner couple of counties in the Hudson Valley to about New York City. Why they didn't put, I don't understand this. I'll wait for Joe to, to see what his theory is. Uh, they did not put a watch up for Long Island. I don't quite understand why. Uh, Boston has not put Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut under a flood watch yet. I'm guessing they must have decided that uh, most of the ra the rain east of New York City was going to come in a little bit later, so uh, later on Friday night or maybe not until daybreak Saturday morning, uh, as opposed to areas of the south and west. Uh, I don't know. I'm just guessing here that that's what they, why they're doing it. But I suspect that tomorrow morning when the Weather Service gets a hold of everything, they are going to put up watches uh, in, a, in other areas uh, besides what we're seeing right now. And, and the heavy rains from this, by the way, are going to line up uh, pretty much right along the coastal plain. And 
and I think that's the area that's going to. Uh, uh, I, I don't think that uh, I think that's the area that's going to wind up with uh, two to three inches. I wouldn't even be surprised if somebody, you know, pushes the upside by about twenty-five to fifty percent, given what I've been seeing uh, on uh, the guidance and just just the way things have been playing out with respect to these um, storms that we've had for the uh, last couple of months. Um, I don't know. Is something going on here with respect to the stream? Because it's, it's, you're here. I'm seeing everybody. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm watching what you guys are saying. So, I mean, is there a problem again? Can you, can you just kind of uh, let me know here? All right. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, I just, um, I just did a quick reboot on my side. So, uh, you know, sometimes when it's happening, it's also on your side. Uh, if the internet traffic is, is, is heavy, if you don't have enough speed, um, you're going to, um, you're going to wind up, uh, having an issue. So, uh, I, I don't know what else to say about that, uh, but I, I've done everything I could with regards to getting this, you know, trying to get this to work correctly. Uh, We'll we'll see how it we'll, we'll see how it plays. I'm still waiting for Joe Rayo. He's not here yet. Um, we also have winter storm watches up in upstate New York, uh, central and northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, and for uh, western Maine, away from the coast. Uh, there's still some winter storm warnings up in the northern part of Maine, and this is from today's weather system that is just booming out. Uh, right now. So uh, th there's two separate areas here. Those watches are also going to wind up going to warnings, I think, before it's all said and done. We have winter, uh, winter weather advisories across um, central Michigan, uh, just about all of the state of Wisconsin, uh, through central Minnesota. And we've got uh, advisories, um, we got advisories up uh, through central Minnesota in an area where they've got They've had almost as little snow as we've seen here in the northeast, in uh, in, in the areas in southern uh, Long Island and New York City and southern New England, believe it or not. Um, those advisories extend through North Dakota and then on up uh, in through northern Montana. We've got a couple of counties with winter storm warnings uh, that uh, are, are up there. We've got winter storm warnings up for the Sierra Nevadas. It's the next uh, system coming in from the west. We've got flood watches up also for South Florida because that area is going to get hit with several inches of rain or more. Uh, now, let's take a look at what's going on on the satellite loop tonight. And uh, we're seeing uh, the storm system in eastern Canada uh, over uh, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia uh, that is uh, slowly pulling away to the east. Uh, skies, for the most part, are clear except for what's around the Great Lakes. Uh, there's not much in the way of lake effect going on tonight. We just have uh, some uh, patchy areas of uh, snow on the radar aloft, but it's, it, it's all but done there. And, but otherwise, it's uh, nice and clear from uh, central and southern New England right down the coast until you get into South Carolina and Georgia and you start to see some high clouds that are moving in. And we're seeing uh, uh, an expansion of moisture really blossoming out in uh, the eastern part of Texas, Louisiana, and in the Gulf of Mexico, and also extending up into Oklahoma and Arkansas. Separate from this, thanks to the uh, cold easterly flow that is over uh, the northern plains and back up into northern Montana, we have uh, clouds and we've got some snow going on there right now. And there's a system off the coast of the Pacific Northwest. If you look carefully on the upper left, you can see the swirl there. Uh, that is the next weather system that is uh, coming uh, inland. So kind of a busy satellite loop here tonight, a lot of uh, a lot going on. And, and of course, this Gulf system, uh, what, what I find interesting here is that the actual surface low is going to track right across the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, usually they track up closer to the coast or, or even inland of the coast, but this one is actually going to be tracking right across the middle of the Gulf and then crossing Florida, and then taking this sharp left turn up the eastern seaboard. So there's going to be some uh, subtropical influence here with regards to um, uh, this particular weather system. Uh, now, uh, let's see. I think 
Rail is here. He is joining us. Just give me a second, Joe. I just got to um, move you and bring you up on the screen. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you? Uh, yeah, you're kind of low. Kind of low? Kind of low. Kind of low. I'm a, I'm right here. Uh, there you go. Now testing one two. Yeah, yeah, your yeah, your audio is kind of low. I don't understand why. Um, well, we've got you here, so just talk louder. Testing one two. Much better, thank you. That's it. Yeah. So there you go. So what have I missed? Um, I was just going through the satellite and uh, looking at this uh, system that's forming in the western Gulf of Mexico that's moving eastward. Um, I also, maybe you have an opinion on this. Uh, this is my theory. So they put up flood watches up for, De for Delaware, uh, parts of uh, Maryland, and uh, you know, right around Washington, you know, Washington D.C., Baltimore, up I-95 for Delaware. Uh, all of New Jersey except the Northwest, Southeast Pennsylvania, uh, to New York City, and uh, a couple of uh, counties in the lower Hudson Valley. They did not put a watch up for Long Island. They did not put a watch up for Connecticut yet. So, no, my theory is that they're thinking that the rains... And they don't have a watch for Putnam, Putnam County either, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, I'm just theorizing here. It's just my theory that... Um, you know, you certainly could make a case that the rain is going to arrive probably sometime, say, after 5 a.m. So they figured, you know what, we've got it up. I mean, 5 a.m. from New York, east of New York City, okay, east and northeast of New York City, that it'll arrive after 5 a.m. on Saturday morning. So they, they thought, okay, well, we really don't have to put the watch up now. We can do it tomorrow morning. I mean, I just don't know, you know, I kind of looked at it and I said, well, why, the, the bulk of the heavy rain, the way the models are having it and the way WPC has it is going to be right over, uh, you know, the coastal plain from Maryland all the way up to southeast New England. Why would you leave those? I mean, that's, that's my lot. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking they're just going to wait till tomorrow morning to put it up. Yeah, Mr. Contino, we're already getting into it. I'm not on the, on more than five minutes and already he's got his giant, pitchfork out saying well rayo finally updated his forecast he's calling for showery rains but finally he's calling for it to be heavy uh mr contino check my forecast from yesterday on facebook i know you do it seems that you do maybe you didn't check it yesterday i had heavy rain in the forecast yesterday and if you recall on tuesday i said i'm mentioning precipitation oh. for saturday and when i feel right to mention intensity i'll mention it and i did yesterday I'm mentioning it today, and I'll probably mention it again tomorrow as well. So there you go. Okay, well, that kind of set him straight. John Melander, says he, John Melander says he can't hear me. Can anybody hear me? Joe R., volume low. I don't know what's going on, Joe, why the, why the volume is low. Yeah, I, 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 turn, I can hear you on my headset because I turned the volume up on the headset. Well, you're not – when you were talking when the test, you went down on the mic and – it was fine. Did you pull away from the mic? Let me just let me just check my uh, my uh, my microphone here. Let me just see if I uh, have the settings correct. Okay, I can do that. Um, and you just keep talking, Joe. I mean, I you know I. All right, no worries. Um, I'm just kind of monitoring things also here to make sure everything's working okay. So let's, uh, where was I? I was going to go back to go to the radar, so maybe I'll do that, shall I guess. So let's um, let's take a look at the radar at the moment. And uh, we're seeing uh, a lot of rain. I'll get myself out of the way. Um, a lot of rain across um, uh, Texas. It's it's in bands mostly. Uh, you can see there's gaps in between. There's a patch of rain uh, in southeast uh, Louisiana, southern Mississippi, and southern Alabama. And there's a gap. Then you've got rain in East Texas uh, with uh, a couple of patches of heavier rain. And there's another gap. And then you've got a third area in central Texas that goes up into Oklahoma. 
and that area looks like it has a couple of thunderstorms. We have a few odd severe thunderstorm warnings that have popped up this evening uh, from this system, which is somewhat vigorous. Uh, this is not ideal for severe weather, but the shortwave itself is actually somewhat vigorous as it moves along. Meanwhile, still a little bit of leftover snow down East Maine. Uh, we have some snow tonight in a band across uh, northern South Dakota and southern North Dakota, across into central Minnesota, and now moving into northeastern Iowa and into parts of western Wisconsin. Uh, we also have a little bit of patchy snow going on in northern Montana, as well as in western Montana and northwestern Wyoming. Some patchy precip further south as you get down into southern Utah, New Mexico, and Arizona. It's mostly scattered there. And not much along the west coast as we have uh, uh, some showers that are just now coming in uh, to coastal Washington to the uh, west of uh, of Seattle. So that, uh, that at least that's loading up with that next system that is coming in. Now, WPC, a couple of things here. Uh, they're showing a uh, two to three inch air, an area of two to three inches of rain from southeastern New England across Rhode Island and Connecticut and Long Island, the lower Hudson Valley to uh, New York City and New Jersey, easternmost Pennsylvania, uh, down into Delaware and Maryland. It's a fairly solid area here. And this is the, um, se these, this is the three day forecast. So this takes us right through Sunday night. Uh, we also see the heavy rains that are being indicated in South Florida, where we've got flood watches up there, although the heaviest rain seems to be just offshore uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, but it is over the Keys. Uh, rainfall uh, further inland is a little bit less uh, on the order of, you, get, you know, the back edge of the dark blue is a half an inch, and that's in central Pennsylvania uh, on southward into uh, eastern Tennessee, uh, back into Alabama. Uh, also seeing an area of uh, three quarters of an inch to an inch and a quarter across the, the Gulf states, a couple of patches of an inch and a half when you get into the southeast. Now, in the areas in upstate New York, well up north of I-90, uh, and also with the central and northern Vermont, central and northern New Hampshire, and and, and a good chunk of the state of Maine, we're going to see snow out of this, and I'll, I'll get to that momentarily. Uh, half to three quarters of an inch uh, being indicated for southern Minnesota and much of Iowa. And on the northern side of this, this is going to be snow as well, and also a half to three quarters of an inch that has moved into parts of Wisconsin. Uh, along the west coast, we're seeing uh, rainfall amounts in some patches of uh, two to three inches in northern California to southwest Oregon, and also uh, in the Sierra Nevadas, we're seeing um, uh, precip amounts of several inches of liquid. And this is where we have winter storm warnings up. So out there, it's going to be snow as well. And let's look at uh, the actual digital forecast. I'm just going to make this map a little darker so that it, it shows up a bit better. And there you go. Um, in the Adirondacks, we're looking at um, maybe a foot or more of, uh, of snow out of this. And the same for the northern half of Vermont, New Hampshire, and interior of Maine, anywhere from 10 to as much as 15 inches uh, being indicated. Uh, some lower amounts as you head down toward uh, Syracuse and Rochester and back to um, uh, toward Buffalo, and even lower still further south. I think you're going to have to go well north of Route 84. I know you were mentioning this the other day about maybe if it came in fast enough, maybe you'd start off as a little wet snow north of Route 84. I think it's still possible, but as far as anything that might whiten the ground, I think you're going to have to go way up for that, Joe. Well, I'm, you know, for the eclipse, one of the places which I'm thinking of going to is Plattsburgh, which is near the Canadian border. That's I'm hoping that if they get a lot of snow, that that'll all be gone by April the 8th, if I do head in that direction. Oh, it, it, it's um, it, it's going to be mostly gone. But it's not like it's going on top of other snow cover up there. They're just as lacking as everybody else. By the way, um, when you look at today, I mean, I, I, I noticed the temperatures today from the 20s this morning uh, in some places and, and, and highs this afternoon, barely getting back into the 40s relative to normal. This was probably the coldest day, one of the coldest days of the entire um, you know, period from December through March. 
Yeah, well, uh, tonight uh, here in uh, Putnam Valley, we're expecting temperatures maybe getting down as low as 19. We haven't had too many nights where the temperatures have been below 20. And the winds were certainly uh, a factor today, really made it feel much colder than it really is. And the winds will still be a bit brisk on into the uh, first part of tonight. Yep. All right, let's, uh, I'm going to move the snow map over so we can take a look at what's going on. Uh, some uh, snowfall amounts over the next uh, 48 hours of seven, uh, five to seven inches across central Michigan, four to six across much of Wisconsin. I guess that, but that's advisory criteria for them now. I, or, or, I, normally, I would have thought that six would have been enough for a winter storm warning, but I guess not. Um, Minneapolis may double their snowfall for the season if they get six inches as being forecast uh, by the Weather Service. And that band crosses up into North Dakota. And then you get to some bigger numbers when you move up uh, into uh, Montana, where, uh, you know, some of the mountains there uh, picking up uh, in the western part of the state, picking up uh, as much as 20 inches being indicated on the digital forecast. And you can see also uh, snow amounts. Uh, on the heavy side in uh, parts of northwestern Wyoming, uh, some snow further south as you get down into Colorado, but only a, an inch or two or three from this. And by the way, this takes us uh, through Sunday morning, 8 a.m. And then, of course, we have the Sierra Nevadas where, you know, we're putting down some big amounts of up to two and maybe even three feet in uh, in some of the elevated areas there. You can see the yellow areas represent 36 inches or more. Uh, but I don't have any big, there's a 31 printout. I don't know exactly where that is. So um, another big snowfall there, although it's it's confined probably to the higher elevations uh, as you don't have as much cold air now as you did from that storm uh, that uh, happened you know, back a few weeks ago. And here's the probability for at least two. I'm sorry, this is the probability for at least eight. This, uh, this is the probability for at least eight. And uh, much of uh, northern New York uh, in a 50% or higher probability for at least eight. Uh, from northeastern New York across northern New Hampshire and Vermont and into interior Maine, that's an 80 to 90% chance for at least eight there. In the New Brunswick side, it becomes 90 to 100. Uh, then you have the area to the west uh, uh, from Wisconsin uh, through central Minnesota, uh, northern South Dakota and southern North Dakota, and back up into Montana. Uh, the blues there are all indicating a 50% or higher chance for at least eight there. And you've got the same thing going on uh, for the uh, for the Sierra Nevada Mountains. So I'm thinking uh, there's a couple of things about this system, Joe, that, that, that I find very interesting. One is the fact that uh, the actual low center is out. It's going to be out somewhere in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. And that's a, that's a bit unusual. Or at least the initial low center is there, and that's during the uh, tomorrow morning. It's centered pretty much right in the middle of the Gulf, and then eventually uh, a, a new low forms northwest of that, uh, east of New Orleans, and you've got rain that spreads out uh, into the southeast by Friday evening. Uh, there's also the GFS is trying to show some patchy rain into southern Ohio, southern Indiana, and western Pennsylvania. There's a big area of heavy rain in southern Florida. Uh, there's a there's a little bit of a tropical feed with this, and uh, I think that's part of the reason why, as this low starts to uh, develop on Saturday, that you get this area of of uh, heavy of heavy rain from northeast Virginia uh, into southern and southeastern New England. I'm thinking I'm thinking the two to three inches is probably a pretty good forecast. And I also think that this could be a situation where we could wind up with, you know, somebody's could, I don't know if say double, but I wouldn't be, it wouldn't shock me if we see some four inch amounts pop up. It's been the story for the last year that uh, these systems have been overperforming. So why not overperform again with this one coming up on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, exactly. Why should this be any different? Uh, the, um, Areas to the north, you can see where the snow is. This is Saturday afternoon. It's mostly north of I-90. Uh, actually, the area of snow sinks a little bit further to the southeast when the low gets further north, uh, but it's never going to make it much further south than, say, you know, the I-90 corridor. And then it's mostly rain in Massachusetts anyway. Uh, that area, thankfully, it moves out. Now, 
I'm thinking it's not a super tight gradient. Um, I think the winds are going to pick up, but I don't think they're going to go off the wall. But nonetheless, I'm a little bit concerned with Saturday with regards to coastal flooding for the east and south-facing shorelines from Delaware all the way up into southern and southeastern New England. I don't know whether you've taken a, you have an opinion on that. No, I, you know, I, I, I said to myself this morning, I said, my God, here we go again. I, it, it was a while that we've had a, a system like this to, to bring the potential for so much rain, but it looks like, and it's going to be doing it a rather short little time. I, we're going to get some, uh, some precipitation beginning after midnight Friday night. But I think the main, uh, the heavy artillery is going to arrive here sometime between uh, noontime and six o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Correct. And it um, it moves out. It's out of the way. Palm Sunday looks like it's a good day, but it's going to be chilly and there's going to be a north-northeast wind. Windy, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be windy with a north-northeast wind uh, Sunday. And the low, excuse me. A low forms well out offshore. Uh, thankfully, it looks like it wants to maybe relax the uh, onshore flow come Monday and Tuesday. I mean, there's some onshore flow, but it's not terrible. You know, that's coming off the full moon. So again, you know, oh, there might be some coastal flooding issues, even though the storm itself is gone. And then you've got a large high in eastern Canada that's built down the eastern seaboard. Meanwhile, excuse me. Well, no. Meanwhile, uh, in the west. You've got another system. There's the system coming into the west with the snow in the mountains and the valley rains. And you can see the large area of snow from Montana through North Dakota, Minnesota, and Wisconsin as a low forms uh, up in northwest Kansas. And that flow is going to go by well to our west. So we don't have really much to do with that. But there's going to be the southern extension of that front is probably going to cause another low to develop. And um, you, you can see that uh, at least for next Monday night, I think in the middle, in the in Tex East Texas and in the lower Mississippi Valley, we could have some severe weather risk. But the next chance that we'll we'll see anything here in the east is probably maybe Wednesday with a cold front, and then that goes out, and then we've got another big low that forms comes into the west that forms a, a sizable storm in Kansas, and that one is, it gets ejected east northeastward uh, for. Um, maybe next weekend, but that's far enough down the road that I don't think we need to really uh, sweat too much over it, at least from what I'm seeing at this point. Well, that is, after all, Easter weekend, though. Uh, definitely, yes, it is. So it does play um, into, uh, you know, all those little Easter egg hunts and the, the uh, Easter parade finery and whatever. So we'll see. We'll see how that plays into uh, uh, impacting the holiday. So um, how did your talk go tonight? Everything go well, I hope? Yeah, I, you know, as you are well aware before, uh, you know, we started the uh, regular show tonight, 8 o'clock, the library I did this for signed a contract, said it was going to start at 6.30, and then I found out at the last minute that they had switched and went to 7 o'clock for the, for the program. So I just simply told them, we got to start right on time. I usually give libraries a... Uh, you know, a few minutes past the start time, you know, for people to come in uh, and and get themselves oriented or whatever. And after the presentation, I usually have a 10 or 15 minute q and I said, would we start right at seven o'clock and there, there can't be a QA. and a That's that's the story. So. And that was that. And that was. Uh, that. Yeah. Uh I didn't really do much today, so uh, I have, uh, oh, I did clean by, <laughs> so yesterday, uh, I decided yesterday, it started with me going through a pile of mail and, you know, ripping up stuff and throwing stuff away. I'm sure you have, the, everybody seems to have that issue with mail. They just put, throw it on a table somewhere and then they wait till it grows to a big pile and then they start ripping through it. So I started with that and then I decided, okay, I got to clean the bedroom. And among other things, I saw there was a wad of dog hair. You have a dog that sheds, you're going to have dog hair. That was on the corner of the bed. Now, my bed is one of these Ikea beds. Because my house, when I bought it, came with the furniture. So it's got drawers underneath it where you can put clothes. Anyway, there, it's, a, it's, it's very heavy and you can't move it. Uh, not 
by yourself. And there's a space of about an inch between the edge of the bed and the wall. So I said, why not? Let me just see what happens. And I took my I took a broom and I stuck it down in that space. And you know, I went from one half of the bed out, and then I went to the other side and did the other half of the bed. Joe, that was now I had not that was my first time I did that in in the three the three years that I've been in this house. Okay. I pulled up so much dog hair. I literally had to use both my both hands and both arms to carry that dog. It, it was it was another dog. I had a whole another dog. I could have I could have knitted a rug out of that. I could have made myself a coat. Um, but I used both hands to get all this hair, and I just it was it was really I was shocked at how much hair that that. That that when I mow my dog is is got a lot of fur and I know he sheds, but that even surprised me. And I don't know how it got there behind the bed. I have no clue. Was that your current dog, or maybe it was left over from the last dog you had? No, no, it it was my dog. Oh, okay. It was all my dog. I can tell from his the fur. It was my dog. The fire truck, nineteen eighty eight. Thanks a lot. (laughs) Uh. Dog hair is very tasty when it's covered in chocolate. Ew. Ew. God, really? Oh. I didn't need to, I didn't need I did not need to read that. No. I I I I, I hear you. All right, you know what? Uh this has kind of been a, a tough week for you because you've been doing you know, you're doing your talks and then you're doing the show. So by the time you get to me, you're all talked out. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be that way for at least another, well, up until when the when we have the eclipse. And then it's all, I have nothing after April the 8th. So, and you know right. what? If a library approaches me, I'm going to say, let's wait a little while. I can't deal with this anymore. <laughs> yep, I understand. All right, folks. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to just... Come back on Sunday, okay? So we'll be back Sunday night at 7.35 p.m., which is our usual time. The uh, Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast, uh, let me just get myself out of the way here, uh, is uh, brought to you by Tempest by Weatherflow. Get the revolutionary Tempest weather system and join the fastest-growing observing weather network on the planet. The link is on the description to this podcast. Use the coupon code... Winter 2324, I'm going to change that coupon code by when we come back on Sunday, but it's still Winter 2324, because if you do, you will get... Oh, I was taking a drink of apple cider. 10% off. Is it spiked? No. <laughs> no. All right. You're not, you're not the sort of person that drinks spiked uh, apple cider. No. No. All right. Gotcha. Okay, folks. Um, have a great night. And um, so we're going to go, and we will see you Sunday at 7.35 p.m. Have a good night, folks. Good night.